Good morning, and welcome to St. Mark AME Church. Thank you for joining us today during our worship service. I'm Pastor Jonathan Davis, and I'm here today with my family. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Sunday. I'm First Lady Ida Davis, and I would just like to take this opportunity to thank God for allowing us to be in your presence once again. And we just pray that all is well with you and your family. Whether it's your first time worshiping with us, or you're one of our St. Mark Church family members, Make sure to press subscribe so you can receive notifications when we post. Stay tuned after the video to find out how to stay plugged in. Good morning, and let us go to the throne of grace. Father, we thank you once again. Thank you, Lord, for sending us your son, Jesus Christ, that he may die on the cross and rise again for our sins. Lord, we thank you for this resurrection day. And although, Lord, we are not worshiping in the way that we normally do to Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to worship you anyhow outside the Heavenly Father, the four walls. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to come together once again in your name, your son's name, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the opportunity, dear Heavenly Father, to come together as a family, dear Heavenly Father, and just to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Remembering, Lord, that the reason that we're here today is because he rose. We love you, Lord, and we just take this opportunity to thank you, to tell you how much we thank and praise you. We love you. We give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. And it's in the precious and holy name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ's name, we pray this prayer. Amen. Hello, we will be reading Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. Again, we will be reading Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. Now, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember now, he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee. Saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified at the third day was rise again. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other woman with them, who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to, to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen cloth lying by them sleeves. And he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. Our scripture text again comes from Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. Amen. And we're going to concentrate um, this morning uh, on those verses that say this. Verse number six says, he is not here, but he has risen. And verse number eight that says, and they remembered his words. Let us pray. God, we thank you once again for this opportunity, oh God, to be a blessing. Help now, O oh God, thy servant, as he speaks to your people, that you will hide me behind the cross and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to use for a subject today, he has risen. Remember his words. He has risen. Remember his word. Can you still hear the cries of the people shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Then can you still hear 
them shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Can you still hear a mother's cry as she stood at the foot of the cross to see her son as she barely remembered, body torn to flesh? Can you still hear the ringing of the nails as they were driven through his hands and through his feet? I can imagine that this is what the women heard as they journeyed their way in order to prepare the body of Jesus for burial. As they got up early that morning to be able to take care of their Lord and Savior. So many voices probably rang through their minds. So many visual scenes probably came across their eyes as they remembered and saw the fact that Jesus had to carry his own cross up the hill to Golgotha, the place where he would be crucified. I can still hear them pondering in their minds, who's gonna roll the stone away over the tomb where Jesus was laid? He, they can still hear it ringing in their minds and their memories of how Jesus himself on the cross said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They could still hear ringing in their ears, it is finished. They could still hear, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. But yet and still, we want to focus today on the fact that he has risen. If you just remember his words. With all that that they had going on, they kept going. Then they come to the tomb and encounter these two men in shiny garments, telling them, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Can you hear them? What? What do you mean the living among the dead? Where is our Lord's body? Where have you taken him? Then they say, he is not here. He is risen. Remember what he said in Galilee? He would be given over to sinful men. He would be crucified. But on the third day, he would rise again. They remembered his words as this was told to them by the two men in shining garments. But then they couldn't stay at the tomb. They had to go and tell somebody. They had to go and tell the disciples. Mary Magdalene, Joanna and mother, Mary the mother of, of James and the other women that were with them, they went and told their story. Oh, what a story they would tell of what they had witnessed. Why? because they had remembered his words. They got there and there was the 11 and all of the others there, more likely still in hiding, still scared and afraid because not only had they crucified Jesus, but they were probably looking for them also. But here these women come, these same women that Jesus had touched with his ministry. Here they are telling this seemly story that nobody else would believe. Can you hear the disciples saying, how in the world could this be true? How in the world could this happen? We were there. We saw what they did to him. We saw how they had tortured his body. We saw how he was unrecognizable. We saw everything that he did on the cross. So how now? Can he be among the living? These are the questions that they had. These are the things that they were saying to the women. I can hear them now mocking the women. This is foolish. I don't know where you got that story from. But oh, I can imagine if I was one of the women, they were probably sitting there saying, brothers, don't you know, this is the same Jesus who took two fish and five loaves and fed over 5,000. This is the same Jesus that called Lazarus, who was in the, in the grave stinking dead, 
and he came out of the grave alive with his grave clothes on. This is the same Jesus who a woman just touched the hem of his garment and was made whole again. Surely, I don't know about you, but surely I can believe that my Lord is alive. If he did it for them, surely he can do it for himself. Why? Because I know that he has all power in his hand. Can you hear that witness? Can you hear their testimonies that they are telling to the brothers? But look, can you imagine the brothers and the others saying, I don't know if I can believe that because I've never seen anything like it before. I've never seen anything like this crucifixion before. I've never seen anybody torn apart like Jesus' was. I just can't believe that he's still alive because they were remembering what they had seen, but they were not remembering what he had said. On the third day, he said, I will be raised. They weren't remembering that. They were remembering what had just happened. So many times in our life when we have experiences and trials and tribulation comes, we can't think past the trial or tribulation because that's the only thing that we see. We can't remember that when the storms had raged before in our life, Jesus was there and he made a way for us to overcome. That's exactly how they felt that day. But the women had seen and they began to remember and they believe. If we can only remember his words, it would help us to get through. But look at Peter. You know the one who denied him three times. Peter wasn't just satisfied with the stories that they were telling. And even if he stood in unbelief, he took off and ran to the tomb to get answers for himself. What did he get when he got to the tomb? He found the tomb was empty. He found the linen clothes that had been wrapped around Jesus' body laying there by the side. Why? that they were still there and why was the tomb empty? It's because Jesus had risen. But Peter began to ponder these things and began to wonder what is to come to pass about all this that has just happened. He didn't get it then maybe, but I believe that he would get it later on. I believe that he would begin to understand and remember that Jesus had risen just like he said he would. Brothers and sisters, you know Jesus is in our life. You don't have to worry about what's going on. All you need to do is remember his words, remembering that he can make the impossible possible, remembering that he can make a way out of no way. Remembering the fact that when he said he would rise again, he did. It's just like later on in scripture, Luke chapter 24, verses 38 and 39, says this, and Jesus said to them after he had came amongst the disciples and those who were with them, he asked them, he said, why are you troubled? Why do thoughts arise in your heart? He said, behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. He said, handle me and see, for a spirit have not flesh and bones, and you see me. And then later on, he ate with them, reminded them again that these things had to happen concerning him. He had to be given over to evil men. He had to be crucified. But oh my goodness, he had to rise on the third day. He, in other words, he was saying, why do you have doubt in your mind that I've risen from the dead? Why do you doubt that I wouldn't do just like I said I would do? That I would be risen from the dead after three days? We are so grateful today that Jesus has ascended unto heaven. 
We're so grateful today that he sitteth at the right hand of the God, the Father Almighty. He has risen from the dead. Can't you keep on remembering God's word that he has promised to be with us even to the end of the time? He promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us. And as he began to leave them, he told them to go and preach and teach his gospel to the uttermost parts of the world. In other words, go tell somebody that Jesus' words are still true. Go tell somebody that Jesus is not dead, but he has risen. Not only that, but he left us. The Holy Spirit is comforted to take care of us until we meet him on that glorious getting up morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and those of us who are left will be caught up to meet him in the air. Aren't you glad today that Jesus has risen from the dead? I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that he rose from the dead because when he rose from the dead, it allowed me to be forgiven of my sins. I can go to him and ask of him, and God is a provider. He is also a rewarder, the Bible says, of those who diligently seek after him. And the times that we're going through, brothers and sisters, you've not got to know that our Lord is not dead, that he is yet alive, because he has risen just like he said he was. And I know because he's risen that everything can be all right. God has risen from the dead in the persons of Jesus Christ. I know he's risen. And you said, pastor or preacher, how do you know that he's risen? I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. The songwriter said, I can feel him all over me. When times were hard, I can feel his power and his strength. When times get tough, I know that he is there with me every step of the way. And I know this too, what we're going through, shall pass eventually. And one day, brothers and sisters, we're going to be just like the other feet that hung on the other side of him on the cross. We will be with him in paradise. He has risen. Yes, he has. The Lord has risen from the dead. He has risen from the dead. And I can remember his words, just like he told the disciples that you won't keep me in the grave. After three days, I will be risen, but I had to go through what I went through so that we may have a life and have it more abundantly because we have the forgiveness of God. As he said on the cross, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. We praise God today that we serve a risen and resurrected Savior who continues to have all power in his hand. Yes, he is risen. And I remember his words. Do you remember? Can you remember that God has risen from the dead to save you and to save us from ourselves? We give God praise today on this Resurrection Sunday that he is not dead, but he has risen from the dead. And we praise God for a risen, resurrected Savior whose name is Jesus, that at the very name of Jesus, every knee will bow and tongue confess that he is Lord all by yourself. Can I get a few witnesses to tell somebody that he has risen because I remember his word. He has risen because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's with me through everything that I've been through. He has risen because I remember his words. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we have listened to this message today, maybe there you are. Maybe you haven't heard God's word before, but today you heard his words. You heard the fact that he said he would be raised from the dead. And he was raised from the dead. And he ascended into heaven. There he sits waiting on us to make a decision to join him in paradise. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ for yourself, take this opportunity to ask him, Lord, 
come into my life. Meet me right where I am. I need salvation from you to help me on the rest of my journey. I can't go any farther without being one of your children, being the true disciple that you have called me to be. So right now, Lord, come into my life. Save me. Save me, Lord. I accept you as my personal Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you have prayed that prayer for the first time, please follow the instructions on the screen and contact us through any of the different ways that you see on the screen, through a phone, through an email, through our Facebook, however you can, contact us. We'll be willing to pray for you and to pray with you in your new journey and accepting Christ as your Savior. Amen. Thank you for joining us today on our worship experience. We pray that something today touched your heart. We are grateful to God for all that he continues to do with and through each and every one of us. Stay tuned for next week as we continue to praise God. We are the church, not the building. Amen.